Have you ever found yourself frustrated by just how much memory management you have to deal with in your Java programs? Nope, you haven't. That's because Java takes care of it for you automatically like magic, without you even having to know that it's happening, like your coding fairy godmother. We'll go over the basics of what Java does behind the scenes to manage memory so you don't have to. My name's John and I'm a lead Java software engineer. And I also have a full Java course available in a link down in the description. There you'll find over eight hours of videos exclusive to the course that cover dozens of Java topics. So if you haven't yet, Go check it out. Now this is just a super simple program I whipped up that we can use to illustrate how Java manages memory behind the scenes. So here's the main method. All it does is call this do cat stuff method down here, which just makes a new cat and makes that cat meow. Then after that back up here, it prints out, I'm done doing cat stuff. As you may already know, or at least you've probably heard, Java is what is called a garbage collected language. And no, that doesn't mean that a truck comes by at 6.30 every Monday morning, throws Java in the back, and rides off to a landfill. Although some commenters I've seen would apparently love that. What it means is there are a lot of aspects of memory management that Java just takes care of for you without you having to worry about it. You can still cause yourself problems if you try hard enough, but you have to work really hard to do it. Overall, the function of garbage collection is to just delete objects from memory that your program doesn't need anymore. Without some mechanism for doing that, your program would just accumulate more and more objects in memory over time, and so you'd quickly run out of memory and your program would come crashing down in a fiery blaze of incompetence. But how exactly does it figure out what objects in memory your program doesn't need anymore so it can get rid of them? Well, at a high level, it's pretty simple. So in Java, when you create and instantiate a new variable like this, so cat my cat equals new cat. Well, so what you actually end up with behind the scenes is this variable my cat that acts as a reference or a pointer to this new cat object that I've created out here in memory. Just need some whiskers. There we go. Essentially how it works is that if some part of our program, either a variable or some other object, has a reference to this object in memory, it won't be a target for Java's garbage collection. As long as we can still access it, it's not going anywhere. And that makes sense, right? Java doesn't want to get rid of something we could potentially need and can still access. Back to our code though, at some point in this program, this mycat variable is just going to be out of scope. Now in this case, our mycat variable is declared inside this do cat stuff method. That means the scope of that variable is only within that method. So after our program calls mycat.meow and then returns back to this line where it called that method, well, after that, this mycat variable just doesn't exist anymore. It's now out of scope. So even if we wanted to do something like call mycat.meow, meow up here, well we couldn't because my cat wasn't declared in this scope. It just doesn't exist here. So here's what happens. We had this my cat variable with a reference to our cat object in memory. But now since we're outside the scope where this my cat variable was created, that variable doesn't exist anymore. And when the variable goes away, so does its reference to this cat object in memory. Now what we have is this poor lonely cat object floating all by itself out in memory and absolutely nothing in our program knows where it is or has any way to access it ever again. All it's doing is taking up space in memory. This is what Java's garbage collector is on the lookout for. Stray forgotten objects that no longer serve any purpose to our program. Now it's important to note that a variable going out of scope like this isn't the only way that an object could become unreachable in memory. So for example, if we went back to our code and we took our mycat variable and set it equal to another new cat object. Well, what that's going to do is create a whole new cat object in memory. Beautiful as always. And now instead of referencing that old cat object in memory, it now references this new cat object. Our original cat has no references to it anymore and thus becomes a target of Java's garbage collection to get cleaned up. Now, another way that could happen is instead of mapping my cat to a new object, you could instead just set it to null. So let's say back in our code, we just said instead of my cat equals new cat, we could say my cat equals null. Well, pretty much what that does is just gets rid of this old reference. And now my cat isn't referencing any object at all, but just the same, this poor old cat object in memory now has no references to it and Java's garbage collector will need to clean it up. 
But how does Java actually go about doing this garbage collection behind the scenes so quietly that you never even notice it? Actually, Java has a whole bunch of different garbage collection options. Most of the time, you can just let Java use its default garbage collector settings, and it'll work just fine. Now, it gets way more complicated than this, but here's just a basic explanation of how the garbage collector works by default. All right, so let's just say your program is chugging along. You know, it's creating cats in memory, calculating student GPAs or the average cost of a Big Mac in Guatemala, whatever. And the whole time, it's creating these new objects in memory whenever it needs to. And to begin with, all of these new objects that get created go into what's called the young generation heap. Young gen. The young generation, as its name kind of suggests, holds all objects that were created very recently. All new objects start out here. Then at some point, the Java garbage collector goes, and eh, this heap is starting to get sort of full. I think I better take a look at this and start to get rid of some things that we don't need anymore. And at that point, it does what is called a mark and sweep. Basically, all that means is that Java will check each of these items to see if they still have any references to them. And if they do, Java will mark them as still in use. So let's say it marks this one and this one as still having references, and all the other ones don't. So once it's done that, it then does the sweep step. And that's when it removes anything that wasn't marked, freeing up more memory space for additional objects to be created in the future. But here's something else cool that it does to try and reduce the overall time that it has to spend doing this garbage collection. The garbage collector starts to notice, hmm, you know, some of these objects have been around here for a long time. They don't seem to be going anywhere. Every time I go to check, these objects always still have references. So they're probably pretty important to this program, and I can expect them to stay around for a while. So what it does is it takes those objects that have survived so long in the young generation and moves them over to an old generation heap. So it says, all right, you've been around here for a while. You've been around here for a while. Let's move you over here. Now, the reason that helps is because Java will do a mark and sweep of this old generation heap way less often, which makes sense, right? For two reasons. First, it's just going to fill up more slowly. And second, it's full of objects that have already survived previous rounds of garbage collection. Now, it's still going to be doing multiple mark and sweeps of the young generation pretty often as it continues to fill up with new objects that your program creates. But because it took the time to move these long-lived objects over to the old generation heap, it doesn't have to waste all its time checking all of these really long-lived objects that are very unlikely to be cleaned up anyway. So it's able to do the young generation mark and sweeps much faster. Now, this is a very simplified explanation of this whole process. In reality, all the little details of Java's garbage collection algorithms are ridiculously complicated. But this just gives you an understanding of the fundamentals. And you can now kind of start to code with that in mind. For example, that's one of the reasons it's recommended that you create variables in the smallest scope that they're needed. Because then, as soon as you don't need that variable anymore, it becomes eligible to be cleaned up by the garbage collector, and you can free up some memory. And if you're all interested in seeing it, in another video, we'll go over some additional simple ways that you can start to code with the garbage collector in mind. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you being here with me, and I'll see you next time.